hello so we continue with our uh, topic on strategy and almost always what comes to mind is the balance scorecards of no other than Kaplan and Norton balance scorecards is a by by product of uh, the collaboration between the two giants of strategy during the 1990s well technically speaking they came from the 80s but uh, doctors Kaplan and Norton came up with the balance scorecard the term balance scorecard in order to put aside the idea during this time that you have to focus on just the bottom line if you are old enough and uh, have really studied about business you would realize that this was the time of the great turnaround in the 90s from the 80s uh, mindset because if you look at the way business progressed in the 1980s a lot of businesses are failing and the quality movements uh, came into the view and it was the time of the Toyota and uh, the Japanese companies Mitsubishi, Nissan, everything, Sony and of course after that in the 1980s middle of 1980s about 1987 or something came the ISO uh, movement in Europe and in the US it's the Baldrige uh, Malcolm Baldrige uh, uh, National Quality Award which in the Philippines took its form as the Philippine Quality Awards now at about this time in the 1980s during this time in the in the US a great uh, bear market is brewing and in fact in 1987 the black monday i don't know if i if i stand if i say that correctly but the black monday of 1987 uh it's a crash that happened in october 1987 it's it's a sudden severe uh largely unexpected you know market crash that happened in October 1997 so all these things are happening and so a lot of people are confused about hey what happened what is happening in the business you know we have the heydays of the 50s and all that the growth of marketing the growth of manufacturing came the total quality management came the quality movement and then you know all over the world where standardization and all that but something is still amiss which led to this you know great uh, drop off in the market that's why the beginning of the 90s uh, and the dawn of the internet of course uh, we have to attribute that to the fact that this was the time of the of the Apple and the, and the Microsoft and in the 1995 when officially internet is already a thing you know it's already starting slowly but surely the businesses uh, came into a realization that it's not about the money all the time so the bottom line is does not always have to constitute uh, cash flow and return of investment return on equity and all that so we have to focus on the the things that you know money can't buy so to speak so in in order to focus on that uh, we have Robert S Kaplan and David P Norton coming up with a you have to call it a landmark achievement because uh, this is the beginning of uh, the so-called translation of strategy into action so with with the balance scorecard the book came out in 1996 so at about this time 
we've already seen the internet in its infancy stage and so maybe this is a time that they realize that you know it's not it's not uh, it's, it's not always about bottom line there are certain things that you must see in a company okay so like for example uh, uh, Microsoft during that time I mean Microsoft is a company that literally launched you know the DOS operating system the Windows 95 which was the turning point of uh, their uh, at least their software giantness so to speak so when that happened uh, a lot of people are now thinking hey it's not about just focusing on assets hard assets or or the bottom line because uh sooner or later you see you know a boy or two uh, in in their garage doing something you cannot attach value to that right i mean these are just you know if you look at it these are just pieces of you know uh things that you can see in your garage right but then after a while when they come up with something it turns into a game a software so hey where's first where did that value all come from that is why slowly uh, companies begin to realize that their the intrinsic value of a company doesn't have to be based on assets so balance scorecard did all that and it was um 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 the two people gentlemen dr robert Naplan and uh norton uh, david norton now in in 2001 this uh series of books have already been uh, uh presented to many companies and some of the examples that were uh given that were uh the first implementers of uh, strategy focus organ or of balance scorecard were called the strategy focus organization in fact there are many many books that as uh, attach the word strategic management system sms uh, to the balance scorecard approach so some uh, writers have built a whole management system around the balance scorecard so balance scorecard became a tool whereby a company becomes strategy focused so in the in the opening uh, lines of the book of uh, balance scorecard it says there you know it's not really the plan that <laughs> that uh, really you know that makes uh, a company uh, become successful or fail the presence or the non-presence of a plan really does not matter that much it's the implementation of the plan that is why they said that you know if you have a strategy the way to go about that is to focus on how to turn this in turn it into reality so the strategy focus organization uh saw, saw to that they saw um, the fruition of the balance scorecards uh, on some companies that they discussed in the book so this is an example of the uh the idea of a balance scorecard the idea of the balance scorecard is that it is built upon the strategy uh, the vision of the company and the strategy uh, that revolves around it so this is uh, an example that was that can be found also in the book of uh, Kaplan and Norton. So we have the four perspectives. I've seen companies that are doing six, seven perspectives. If for them that's their balance scorecards, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what uh, Dr. Kaplan and Norton would say about that. But the idea of the balance scorecard is that the vision and strategy is in the middle and there has to be a perspective on learning and growth so the question there the leading question is to achieve our vision how will we sustain our ability to improve so this has something to do with um, the internal learning and uh, the growth of the company usually if you're uh, if you're an HR person uh, if you're a person who's uh, with HR usually it's attached this this perspective is attached to HR and organizational development. So years later, uh, the learning organization, what Peter Senge, I think, uh, came up, came out. Uh, the learning organization uh, is a book that uh, 
came out also uh, with um, Peter Senge. Uh, it's part of the so-called the five disciplines of, of a learning organization. So he said there has to be a shared vision, uh, mental models, there should be te- te- team learning, personal mastery, and system thinking. So the learning growth part uh, became like the, the battle cry of uh, the people you know, at HR and organizational development. Of course, if you're part from management, then you would realize soon that you know without without a learning organization, without people with with uh, enthusiasm to learn and to grow, then the company just collapses from within, right? So it has to be focused on learning. So there's even a saying that says good company uh, good good employees make great companies. That's our that's our mantra at investors in people. Good companies make great, good people make great companies. All right. So after that, if you have good learning growth, then the internal business processes would improve, right? To satisfy, the question is, to satisfy our stakeholders, what business process must we excel at? All right. So even in schools, this is how we go f- uh, from, from improvement of the faculty, faculty development, and then with that, then the academic processes will improve. Now, with the, with the business processes improving, or the internal business process improving, so if you're with the operations, this is your thing. Um, uh, quality management system might also be in, inputted here. So with the internal business process improving, then, of course, the customers will, will be pleased, uh, will be delighted, right? So there's a difference between customer satisfaction satisfied they they are asking for something or they are uh, desiring something and it's being given to them then that's customer satisfaction now sometimes there they came there comes a point where in their the customers are not even uh, asking for it and yet the company delivers it so that turns out to be customer delight right so customers this perspective uh, ask the question to achieve our vision how should we appear to our customers so there should be objectives and there should be measures so customers customer focus or the customer perspective usually is attached to marketing right sometimes it's called also customer and market focus especially with the uh, Bodridge uh, framework and then finally and this is where the the, the previous scorecards of the past have focused so much into right the financial perspective the financial perspective would just be the metrics that we need the sales the revenue of course the the net income the profit margins and all that return of investment return equity solvency of the company profitability so these are the financial metrics so the question there is to succeed financially how should we appear to our shareholders so the the main idea here is of course our shareholders so uh, treasury accounting controllership so uh, these departments are often attached to the financial perspective and now we have sometime in 2005 or something so uh, after the strategy focus organization again Kaplan and Norton came up with a book called um, the maps the strategy maps so the strategy maps came up I, I came out I think in um, in uh, 2005 or something so uh, this is a an idea that uh, they uh, the Kaplan and Norton um, raised the bar when some companies are still asking about you know uh, how to go about the balance scorecard where are the alignments and all that so with the strategy maps they drew the, the alignment right so as, as I was referring to the previous slide I was saying that you know if if the organizational capacity is improved like for example in this example in in this uh, in this uh, uh, slide we have if you improve the knowledge base then the marketing processes will improve that's your internal process uh, if you improve the staff skills then the marketing processes will improve the knowledge distribution will improve the external communication will improve 
with that, the, the customer satisfaction will improve. You will improve sales, overall sales. Okay. You will improve brand image, and this is really part of the of the strategy maps. I didn't include it here uh, for copyright uh, reasons. But the whole strategy map can be uh, can be seen in the in the book of uh, Kaplan and Norton. So with all this, uh, then the financial perspective will will improve. We have the increase of revenue, increase of profitability. Then maybe you can also reduce sales overhead cost. In some uh, in some strategy maps, you also have conquer new markets or offer new services and all that. Uh, so that can also be part of the customer's uh, perspective or customer market perspective. Where in the financial perspective, would focus on uh, new sales, you know, sales from new products and all that. Okay. Um, then finally, we we draw the balance scorecard, balance business scorecard. Uh, an example from a company called ECI. So usually when you have a balance scorecard, you will just put here uh, on the left side you have goals. Like for example, innovation and learning perspective or sometimes called learning and growth perspective. The goals here is time to market. What is the meaning of that? Then uh, since it's part of the innovation learning perspective, then the measure that they are attaching to that is new product introduction versus competition. Uh, you have to reduce the time it takes you to to launch a new product. Product focus, percent of products that equal 80% of the sales. So uh, for them, that is a, a metric that uh, that they are touching maybe to innovation. Then that is also uh, a good uh, metric for them, right? I think Apple, for a part, uh, usually the, new, the sales from the new products should be bigger than the old products so it has to you know drive the sales so it's always so that the company is always innovating so manufacturing learning uh, process time to maturity uh, technology leadership time to develop next generation so this is a part of innovation and then with that you will go to the internal business perspective uh, design product productivity they, we have there so, so some of the things that they are uh, uh, measuring like in this case, unit cost yield, uh, uh, unit cost of the product, manufacturing, this is manufacturing extent cycle time, um, right, capability, manufacturing geometry versus the competition, actual introduction schedule versus the plan. So these are internal business perspective. With the uh, with customer perspective, percent of sales. So this is what I was saying a while ago. So for them, this is part of the customer perspective. Percent of sales coming from the new products. So because I think for them, customer and market perspective is one, right? So but some companies put it in innovation. So anyway, it's it's really up to us, uh, to the company, uh, where you wanna put it. Responsive supply, um, preferred supplier. So maybe this is because they are supply themselves. But uh, if you are referring to your supplier, then it's part of the business business process so this is your if you are the supplier one-time delivery defined by the supplier share of key accounts purchases and all that sometimes even the retention of the customers are also a part of this and then finally of course uh, we have the goal survive succeed prosper so maybe these are their battle cry and that's the, that's what they what's important for them okay so um, this this won't be complete without the the balancing mathematics within so uh, some some uh, companies that are are really using it like uh, some of the companies that I, I've been to uh, when I introduced this we would introduce also the the measurement so like for example financial perspective can can have like for example 35 percent or 40 percent of the of this whole scorecard then customer maybe you can attach 2025 and all that so it depends really on on the company and then with that you give yourself uh, points since since everything is measured remember what Joseph Duran said you cannot improve what you cannot measure of course under the demake formula you have to define first and then measure and then analyze what you measure and then improve what you analyze and then control usually the control comes from the scorecard so you know if you look at all the things that I've discussed 
even from the perspective of uh, the quality movements, TQM, uh, investors in people, all those models, they all come around and they can, uh, they can meet with each other within the balance scorecard. So usually the balance scorecard is like the implementing, implementing and strategy um, guide for management. I always tell my, my students uh, and our clients that when you have the balance scorecard, you can have 100 companies uh, that you are managing. You don't even have to go there as long as you have a way into measuring whether they are reporting correctly. You know, you know what is exactly what's happening on your company and you can focus on the you know the right perspective like for example if a company if you one of your companies is lagging when it comes to innovation or learning perspective then you can uh, tell the manager there that you know oh, this is the things that you have to focus on or maybe the business perspective or the internal business perspective is the one that's lagging behind then maybe you can put that so i think the most important there is first is the defining of the metrics within the scorecard and then secondly is the right measurement and then of course the right reporting to you right and then when you analyze you have to analyze correctly especially since you are a manager so you are the management you're the management of that company you're part of the management or sometimes you are the management so when you do that you have to analyze deeply you know in, in a deeper manner you cannot just rely on the numbers remember what uh, the original founder of the TKM said Deming Edward he said that you know relying merely on the numbers as numbers that's not what quality means right so you don't don't rely so much on numbers so where where is the balancing act there balancing act there is while you're operating with numbers and measuring it with numbers you have to go beyond beyond the numbers all right so i think that's a long video i'm sorry for that uh, my target was only about 12 15 minutes but i surely you know went overboard uh, one of my favorite favorite uh, model of uh, the balance scorecard so if you want to learn more about this uh, please let me know in your comments below and leave a comment uh, hit the like button if you like what we've been doing and tell us where where we where you want us uh, to focus next and subscribe in our in our channel so that you'll have more content in the future but of course, if you really want to study on balance scorecard, then you have to go to the master himself and read the books that I've loved reading for many, many years now. The balance scorecard, strategy focus organization, and the strategy maps. Thank you very much for listening.